Yeah, well, I want to show you guys. I don't know if you could see this, but this is the Known Worlds of God. And while Linda was playing, we were in at this level here. Um, it says a single note of a flute, but basically any type of music mm -hmm. um, and sound healing. And then it went, it goes up to wind, oh, cool. the wind. And then... Um, Another level is humming sound. Do you see where we yep. are now? We're up here, the third level up. And that was the cicadas. And so we got to Alaya Purusha. So which is consciousness, awareness, intelligence, and the formless, oneness with God. So we got literally up to this third level. Oh, wow. It was so powerful. Oh, my God. Yeah. And we had people who literally fell asleep listening while she wow. was playing. So it was very, very powerful. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Um, but we we visited um, Casadega, which is a spiritualist camp. And I was able to connect with my parents and my brother uh, via wow. psychic medium. And that was an amazing trip, which is only about an hour from Linda. Um, mm. And then we, did, we went to a farm. Um, it's called the Gypsy um, banner horse farm with these beautiful, beautiful horses and mules and all sorts of animals. And that was just amazing. And that's very close by to her too. So there's so much to do here. And wow. like I, I've been putting it out onto Facebook. If anybody's looking for a place to come and just relax, get away from your toxic family and your friends <laughs> and your toxic jobs. And cause it's almost impossible to detox. It is. Um, on this level when you're surrounded by all of this negativity and the vampires. So this has been an, an amazing week for me and um, very healing. And I just can't stress enough for you guys out there. Cause I know a lot of children have a lot of people have children and it's impossible also to have the kids around. So if you can break away, we're going to leave, obviously Linda will leave all the information of how to contact her. And it's just been an amazing journey. Um, fasting and eating healthy. Um, we did make two amazing dishes, so those we'll we'll be posting on and mm -hmm. uh, just spending time with this beautiful soul. Aww. I love you. I love you too. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so, for being here. So, Linda, how did you end up picking this particular area in Florida to build this retreat? And 12 years ago, I was diagnosed with breast cancer, and I cured it using alternatives in a very short time. Um, and when I found out, you know, at that time I was 50 years old, and when I found out about all of the um, pesticides and the chemicals in our food, um, how stress can affect your life, how your lifestyle can affect your life, um, how the pharmaceutical industry um, is basically governing the healthcare and the medical systems, um, and all the you know what perceives to be uh, collusion going on between the government and buy-offs uh, to pay farmers not to farm, uh, all of those things. I was completely immune to all of that information until I was 50, and. You know, everybody says sometimes getting the, the disease was the best thing that ever happened to them, and, and that's certainly true with me. So once I found out all this stuff and was able to cure myself, I realized that I was angry, and um, I wanted to share this news with a lot of other people. Mm -hmm. So I wrote a book called I Gave Myself Cancer. I Can Take It Away. Great Alternatives title. Brought Me Back to Life. Thank you. And... Um, um, then I started to hold classes. I used to live in Albany, New York, uh, mm -hmm. when all this was initially transpiring. So fast forward, a move to Florida took me to Naples, and then getting some spiritual guidance, some divine intervention about why I needed to relocate up here. Uh, it was just it, it, actually when I was in Naples, I was renting, and I was being told I need to buy my own home. So I was in Naples for five and a half years, and I started looking for a home there. 
and nothing was coming together, falling together. So I came up to the villages, which is in central Florida, north of Orlando, to give a presentation. Um, a woman that I know ran a club that I started when I used to live here. Mm -hmm. And so she always invited me back to give a presentation a couple times a year. So I was coming back up and I thought, oh, well, let me just take a look and see what uh, the homes are like in that area. So I looked and I didn't want to be in the villages. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that community, but it's no. 55 and older. It's 100,000 people. You have basically postage size stamped lots. And I didn't want to move back there, but I did want to have a home with some kind of small acreage. Little did I know I was going to wind up with what I have. <laughs> so again, divine intervention. I looked online, saw three homes in the areas, you know, smaller townships surrounding the villages, and um, looked at three homes all in one day. The third one I looked at was this one, and it's on two and a half acres. I have a pond. There's a fire pit. Um, there's a meditation area in the woods. Um, I have have an in-ground swimming pool, and I've got a lot of square footage inside as well to be able to, to get around people. So um, I tell people it found me. <laughs> I wasn't looking Absolutely. to move to this area, not that I had anything against it, but the whole purpose of me setting up this service, um, I call my home White Eagles and Angels, and, and the services uh, vary, um, but the whole reason I did it is because when I was going through my breast cancer recovery, uh, living with my my son, my only son, and my uh, former husband, um, I didn't get much in the way of support for the choice that I made with regard to using alternatives in my uh, recovery. Mm -hmm. And it was very hard because at the same time I was doing the raw for me, I was doing you know burgers on the grill for them and doing cooked foods for them, and I didn't get that much support. So bottom line, I felt that there was a way that I could help people understand the power that lies within them, first of all, to be able to make more positive choices, whether it's to, um, you know, get rid of a stressful job, get rid of the, the standard American diet that I was certainly eating up until that point of diagnosis mm -hmm. um, and all, all the other things. So I felt that I could give back. So when I was in Naples, I developed a program part of which I call um, Phoenix Rising. And that's probably the biggest, most all-inclusive part of the services that I offer. And it's a live-in regenerative detoxification experience. And people can come and stay for as long as they want. And it basically involves um, their food, their which is juices or fruits, mm -hmm. uh, their lodging, um, a couple of the field trips, that I took Christine on. It includes the cost for that. It will include uh, the cost of me picking them up at um, either the Tampa airport, um, maybe Jacksonville or uh, Orlando, and bringing them back there at the end. So literally someone doesn't have to come here with any more than um, you know spending money if they want. So it's an all-inclusive. But some of the other all-inclusive things that it does, because in my journey, of learning about how the body, mind, and the spirit all work together, I started to take uh, classes in different types of healing modalities. So I became a Reiki uh, practitioner, uh, Healing in America, which is a form of healing from uh, England that Harry Edwards started. And there's now a big trust in thousands of people across the UK that are doing that type of healing. And um, did a little bit with Seraphim Blueprint, um, Theta Healing, um, so, and, and I also got into sound healing, crystal healing, color therapy, so uh, raindrop essential oil treatments. Mm -hmm. So when people come here, the cost for the inclusive uh, price includes at least one of all of those therapies. In addition to past life regression, I became certified to teach, or not to teach, but to do past life regression, mm -hmm. which uh, depending on where you are on the scale of you know, is it your diet? Is it your, your mental approach, your emotional approach? Um, it can be any one of those things and, or a combination of all of them. So my feeling was that people needed a way to, like Christine said, to escape, to get away from the negative influences of their family members. Um, and in addition to that, uh, maybe learn for the first time 
um, information that I learned 12 years ago and have been on a continuing journey to keep educated and up to date on all of um, the different um, you know, documentaries that are coming out, mm. you know, vaccines revealed, GMOs revealed, all the series we've had on, you know, what Ty Bollinger did with the cancer series, The Truth About Cancer. So when you pull all of these things together and you realize that um, I've had some people actually that I've coached come to me and say, well, you know, I've been a vegan or a vegetarian for the last 10 years and um, how come I got cancer how come I got this and so you know depending on what their diet has been really like then I look to, to immediately go to well what's the relationship like with your uh, significant other your family your, your children um, what's your spiritual connection to the creator so basically all of these things are included for for one price and it can be adjusted um, to each person's financial needs and you know a week is what I would recommend as a minimum um, because because you really can't do too much within a week. But the education part about eating is certainly incredibly powerful. People don't understand the power of their food because mm. we have been, you know, since the Industrial Revolution in the United States, we have had nothing but processed food with, um, you know, all kinds of chemicals in it. Mm -hmm. And they process it, they heat it, they um, take the goodness out of it, they combine it with other things. And then it becomes something that the body doesn't even recognize as food. And it fills us up. And so we feel like feel like, like we're no longer hungry, but the body is starving because there's no nutritional value in any of that food, uh, let alone all the enzymes, because the enzymes are killed at, I think it's 118 degrees, depending on who you're listening to and talking yeah. to. Well, here, I just moved to this particular area four months ago. Um, and I lived in Naples for five and a half years, and the last year and a half in Naples, I had actually developed the, the retreat service. Um, so, but I've been doing healing, uh, healing work and spiritual work uh, with people for the last, um, since I moved to Naples is really where I went in, in depth and uh, got a lot of training with all of these other um, energy connections, let's say, to the creator, to Mother Earth, to the sun, the power of the sun, and the energy that comes from just that connection alone is amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, what's your, do you have a favorite technique that you like to use, or does it depend on each individual person's uh, situation? Well, I I think, I, you know, sometimes when I talk about past life regression, people are anxious to hear about it. And then when they think about it, it gets scary. Mm -hmm. um, yet when I go through people's, um, you know, health history form and talk to them live about where they are in their journey in terms of wanting to get healthier, and I think that a past life regression would be really helpful to them, especially mm -hmm. people who don't have a lot of um, uh, uh, problems with their current diet, you know, well, maybe things that have accumulated over the years, as we know, nothing starts in five minutes from now if you have a, a Diet Coke, but it's an accumulation. So sometimes they get a little bit scared about the mm -hmm. past life regression, yet sometimes when you can meet, if you're in a place where you have a belief in karma, um, mm -hmm. a belief in a, you know, uh, the, body do the body dies, but the soul doesn't, and that the soul can keep reincarnating until we reach a point where where you know we no longer need or want to come back our lessons are learned it helps to go through that uh, coming face to face with critical situations or uh, life circumstances that we may have had with uh, people in a past life so we may have had an aggressor um, that we need to forgive and we may be carrying a grudge and some deep-seated and rooted emotional trauma as a result of that and until we can brought be brought back in into that area, which is, there may be other ways of doing it, but the one I know of is through a past life regression. And it's a very, uh, very calm and simple thing. And people can get um, very emotional with it. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and the whole purpose of this whole regression thing is to actually to forgive if you were an aggressor and to be forgiven um, by someone and also to give forgiveness. So I've actually had people, you know, that I've worked with who have not been willing to forgive. A woman who 
was in Nazi Germany. Mm-hmm. And um, she saw those people and she just was not ready to forgive her aggressors. And I, you know, kept insisting that, you know, this is a good place to do this because your your physical conditions could be a result of this, you know, non-forgiveness and this tightness that you could see that was within her, her spirit and within her body. And then the people that do, you know, move forward from there. Mm-hmm. So that's one, one of my favorite techniques. Um, and the other one is, is the crystal bit, as Christine mentioned. I, I've been to Brazil a couple times and been through the John of God, um, you know, protocols down there. And Kay was guided uh, last year to actually purchase a crystal bed. So I went back down there to get it. And as people know, may know, those who are familiar with a crystal bed, Mm -hmm. it's basically a five-part healing modality. Um, You have crystal, you have color, you have sound, um, you have um, the entities of the light, and you have light. So when you work with a crystal bed, um, any of the entities of the light that work with John of God come into that healing with you. And so you've got all of those five um, healing modalities that people get in a very peaceful, balanced, um, you know, 45 or 60 minute session. In fact, I'm going to be bringing the crystal bed to level two as a vendor so people will be able to experience. This will be my third time uh, awesome. bringing the crystal bed to Dr. Morris's classes. Mm-hmm. So people have an opportunity to experience. But that's that's an incredible healing. And probably the, the third thing that I really enjoy is um, I love the raindrop essential oil treatment, mm-hmm. um, which is about 150 drops of pure essential oils. And they're put along the bottoms of the feet and mm-hmm. along the back on the spine. And then a warm, hot compress is put on. And then people relax from that. And um, the essential oils are antibacterial, antiviral, anti-inflammatory, um, you know, peaceful, balancing, restorative. So that's um, a beautiful experience for people mm. when they're here. They all go away loving that. And I usually try to save that for their the night uh, before they go home because that's like that life. Like just ends it the on, finale. A, on, yeah. a, on, a, on a very fragrant note. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I have a question. Uh, people that are stuck in fight or flight, because there's so many people that are stuck in that, that, that mode of fight or flight, and it shuts down the digestive and the immune system, so it keeps your blood out in your limbs so you can go, right? And it's very hard on the adrenals. Yeah. Uh, that could fit into the past life regression thing where it happened in a different lifetime and you don't know it now and you don't know how to control that it's it's really good to go to somebody who does past life regression and go back and see where that happened so that you can forgive or release or whatever it is that has to be done there to move forward and and get your your body back in balance because it's out of balance. So I, I just thought I'd, I'd uh, have you done that? Have you done uh, fight or flight for people? Uh, are you well, familiar with that? Well, not so much. That it, I'm sorry, go ahead. Are you familiar with fight or flight when people are stuck in that fight or flight mode? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, definitely. In fact, I, I think I was one of those people who were stuck in the fight or flight mode uh, before I was diagnosed. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a, a, a challenging son, a challenging relationship, and at the same time, I was uh, working about 60 to 70 hours a week for the, um, the career I was involved with at the time. So I was definitely, you know, even though I never had any problem sleeping, I don't think I really ever slept. It was just, you know, lay down and get up and go through and do it all over again. Right. So there was, um, there's a lot to be said for that absolutely the body never rests yeah. when you're in that fight or flight mode your body cannot rest it cannot absorb it cannot heal and um you know one of the things i learned in the uh what we called cancer camp uh was a facility that i went to initially to get a lot of the information that i learned about uh, when i was diagnosed in 2005 um was um you know all of the different ways that stress plays a role in the body. And until you can get, you know, I 
I like to show people a scale of justice picture um, because the scales of justice, when there's when they're when they're even, when they're balanced, mm -hmm. are like this. You know, they're not like this, and they're right. not like right. this. So, you know, hopefully, that you know, we can get people to come away from you know their experience here with a little bit more knowledge about what balance means in their life. And most times, unfortunately, it means major shifts in their lifestyle. And yeah. And, um, you know, may even mean a major shift in in relationships. So whether it's your spouse, your sister, your family, um, my own sister died from colon cancer and she attempted to do what I did because she was diagnosed uh, after I was. And um, she did what I did for a couple of years and was was OK. But, you know, the cancer came back and being intimate with my sister and family's history I could see that it wasn't just the diet that was the cause of the cancer. So, you know, long story short, you really have to get rid of the stressors um, outside of the um, the emotions and come to grips with knowing that you have to let people live their own lives. Mm -hmm. You can't be like this, tied up in a knot, trying to think that, you know, because I don't like what they're doing, that I have the power to change them. Only each person, whether they're your direct family member or not has the power within them to recognize um, the change and they have the power to change they have the power to make the choices mm -hmm. to make the changes but we do a lot of meditation also mm -hmm. um, you know we do some exercise I have a rebounder we do some mild walking so all of this you know combined together and it's basically a one-on-one -on -one experience when people are here we're together like this the whole time, um, with the exception of sleeping hours and maybe some quiet time that's designated. Uh, and people get to pick my brain. I get to share with them, you know, how to make food because we do juicing together. Uh, we'll make our meals together, whatever it is, it, you know, depending on what level of detox they're ready to take on. Um, you know, it could even be if they're prepared for it ahead of time, perhaps doing what Christine and I are doing is the, you know, juicing juicing the grape juice with the lemon juice part of the master fast you know doing some water fasting maybe and then you know intermingling that with 14 16 or 18 hours of dry fasting as well so it's it's just an amazing balancing act that um you know people get to understand what they really need to do to make changes now i can't twist their arm right. uh, like you can't christine can't and we try to do the best we can with the people that come into our arena to to give them the guidance and the love, unconditional love, because we're not ju judging anything in the past. Whatever happened there happened there. We mm -hmm. want we want to have people make choices to go forward, but unfortunately, some of that past stuff, as in a past life regression, does need to come up and to get out so people can release it. You know, if they're holding on grudges with family conditions and situations, even even religious beliefs. Mm -hmm. are uh, pretty powerful in a person's transition. I know it was for mine. I hate to say this, but when I was diagnosed with um, with cancer at age 50, I was still in the mindset that uh, as a Roman Catholic, I was going to you know, go to hell if I died with a mortal sin on my soul. So uh, I, I quickly transitioned out of that when I realized that that was also part of the stressors that I was feeling. So it literally is the the full body, mind, spirit, and the physical, uh, you know, what we eat. And it's not what we eat necessarily. It's what we absorb and can assimilate. And we can't do that if we're sick and have been diagnosed with some kind of illness or, you know, so-called disease um, until we do the cleaning, especially in the bowel and the stomach, because those are the main GI tract areas that are going to that, that are responsible for the body absorbing the nutrition from the good food that you do start to consume. So it's uh, it's not what you eat, it's what you absorb and can assimilate. Would you Although say you that... you can't eat and expect yeah. to get better. Would you say that eating eating healthy, obviously, and, and live liquids is really important, but do you think it would only take you so far as... Absolutely. If you if you have a lot of stress in your life, you mean without doing a detox? Well, even if you do a detox, you have a lot of stress in your life. 
do you think that the detox will only take you so far? You have to eliminate the stress. It Absolutely. It won't work. No, right. it, won't yeah. work. it won't work. That's why those people that I mentioned who I, I did some counseling with said, well, you know, I've been vegan or vegetarian for 10 years. And sometimes right. depending on how many sites you're connected with, you get information. Well, this vegan died, you know, so then all of a sudden their friends are saying, well, that's no not the way to eat so that I'm going to I'm going to go back to eating meat or chicken or fish or whatever. And that's fine, but we never know the rest of that person's story in their lifestyle and how, right. you know, what the, what their individual stressors were. So, yeah. yeah. Even as a practitioner, these things happen to us. We, we fall off. Mm -hmm. um, we start eating, knowing that we're eating and drinking. Like, for instance, I'll take coffee. Um, coffee is the most toxic thing you can probably consume other than soda. But with coffee, it's such a stimulant. And it sort of really brought me way back. It set me way back. And I started drinking that again when I went back to work. Um, when I, I just started a new job about four months ago. And I just felt for some reason, I don't know what it was or why I fell off, I guess, maybe because I felt like I was off track and I wasn't devoting enough time to myself. Because another thing we should talk about is being, you have to be very selfish when you start mm -hmm. this journey because it is all all about you yeah and if you're starting out without self-love that's another big red flag it's just not going to work you really have to be focused okay i'm ready to take this on and i'm ready to face everything mentally physically spiritually so by just changing your diet to answer to your question it's not going to work if you're not going to let things go if you're not going to i just find for myself personally i have to be alone, living alone. Um, I can't have any of those distractions because all my life, life I was totally distracted and off track. Right. Um, so yeah, absolutely. Um, you just have to, you have to do what's best for you. It's definitely an individual journey. Um, and that's really hard if you're in a toxic relationship, if you're in a horrible marriage, if your children are just out of control, which most kids are today because of the toxicity but, levels. Absolutely. Yeah. Coming in, yeah, coming into this world, you know, we're not born with brand new bodies. Um, mm -hmm. So we're bringing in four more generations of all this toxicity. And then, you know, my two children were born premature. Um, and thank God they were healthy and they had, mm -hmm. you know, a full, their arms, their legs. But, I mean, kids now are being born with autism and ADD and all these problems. And and um, so, yeah, and, and, and it's funny because I knew... I heard, had heard about Dr. Morse in 20, it was 2013, um, I had heard that he had helped someone um, heal her Hashimoto's, and, but I was still in a toxic environment, a very stressful mm -hmm. environment. Um, I won't get into details, but it was beyond stressful, probably one of the most three stressful years of my life, mm -hmm. and I, I, couldn't, I couldn't do what... I would have never been able to do then what I'm doing now, now that my kids are off to college and they're out of the home. Mm -hmm. So that's really important too. And I always stress when I start working with clients, I tell them, this is not just about eating an apple or eating grapes. Mm -hmm. You have to really be ready for this because it's deep. And I find that my clients that initially don't really know what they're are stepping into they just know from what i've told them or from what they've seen that it sounds good and they can do it and then once they get into it and changing the diet they start feeling really great mm -hmm. and things are moving along fabulous and i would say within a month or two after starting this they're still in that same toxic environment and they fall off yep. either i don't hear from them or they just can't do it they and then the food gets involved because foods are comfort foods and we eat to bury emotion and mm -hmm. suppress symptoms so all i mean it's just definitely a total mind body soul physical everything yeah well one thing one thing that happened for me the first time i detox was i never realized how much food because it's around us all the time is associated with getting together even if right. it's just two people it i mean it's yep. food everywhere and it's usually sweet and coffee. And go to and and, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and you don't fit in if you don't do that. And of course, no. the one thing we want to do is fit in. So, I mean, it's, it's what's been created in our food industry, which I really want to get into here in a minute, is 
uh, if you don't do what we do, then you're weird. What's happening with Monsanto is they're reaching the, the plateau of Roundup because last year there was two billion kilos of it sprayed. So only 1%. Which for people who don't do kilos, it's 4.5 4 billion pounds because I had to okay. the kilos. <laughs> 4.5 4. 4. 5 billion, billion pounds, pounds of sprayed it. and only one uh, zero point zero one percent of it actually hits the target. So. And there's also the uh, the the new replacement for Roundup that's coming out. It's Liberty something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, I can't remember the last word, but it sounds yeah. so good. Yeah, <laughs> but it's so. It sounds like you're going to be free, right, with right. Liberty? Yes. <laughs> the most frightening thing I got from those videos is the fact that there is a poison in. And the glyphosate or the Roundup itself that's spraying our food, besides being genetically modified, that when we are ingesting these foods, mm -hmm. um, changes your whole gut biome. And it basically okay. shuts down all of digestion. And without digestion, we slowly die, as we all know. So mm -hmm. it painfully, <laughs> pain, a slow, painful death. Yeah. Yeah. So now it's all about restoring the gut flora and that's where I am on my journey I have to figure out now how to, to rebuild my gut flora um, you know being born without a gut flora a compromised gut flora and then running on coffee for about 30 years and all of the toxic foods mm -hmm. um, you know our no one has a good digestive system and, right. and so obviously we know this digestive digestion the utilization of the foods which Gluten was something I gave up three, four years ago because gluten is a glue which pastes down all the villi, so there's no absorption. Mm -hmm. So you're not even absorbing the poisons. <laughs> right. So, and which, then which if you're not eliminating, and I, most, yeah. of, most of us are constipated. We can't mm -hmm. go to the bathroom because it's all Franken food and we're not doing right. any of the other, uh, you know, processes. So you're backing up, and this is where. We all are. We're sewage tanks. We're mm -hmm. sewage and septic tanks, yeah. which shut down all of the glands and nothing can produce. You're all out of harmony. And then there's obstructions, which are the hardened, agomulated tumors that are formed. And everybody's running to the doctor with their symptoms. And, and then they're doing diagnostic testing, finding I have, I was diagnosed with cancer. Mm -hmm. And also it's a neurological problem. So they just start carving these organs out. And now we're faced with, we're walking pumpkins, basically. Yes. With organs missing. And, and so that's what I know. I deal with a lot of people that have had, you know, total hysterectomies, their thyroids taken out, um, you, know, you know, just short of everything but your brain and your heart, mm -hmm. which... You know, yeah. There's so a, there's a doctor that comes to the coffee shop, and I've talked to him a couple of times. We don't really talk much, but his practice, he only operates on thyroids. That's mm -hmm. his whole practice is okay. to take out people's thyroids. They become so specialized. We've had so many organ problems and right. um, and such large numbers that the doctors are now specializing in one single little thing and they can make a lot of money. If it. we can right. get anything across to you guys out there viewing this video right now is if no matter what you're being told you're diagnosed with, please, please do not remove any cells and your cells are everything. Your cells are mm -hmm. all your glands, your tissues, your organs. Don't take anything out of your body because we need everything everything especially the thyroid and the parathyroids and um, I have people now that there's no way around coming off their meds I can't imagine you know living without a thyroid in some way right or shape yeah. or form even if it's a glandular that you have to mm -hmm. take because that, that produces so many hormones and it produces so much for the body so it's scary I'm gonna go grab my phone because I have to read this on film that I saw yesterday and I just I'm beside myself. Okay. Okay, Gary, you ready for this? Yes. Uh, this was on Instagram. And it, it says, one of my best friends has ulcerative colitis and recently decided to remove his entire colon 
to try to rid himself of the, the disease. He started the Gut It Out t-shirt campaign oh to raise God. money for the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation for research to find a cure. Please grab a t-shirt and support finding a cure for colitis and Crohn's. Okay, so, and then the shirts say, gut it out. So people are taking out their colon. Oh my God, this is reminiscent of um, a very famous actress that we know taking her breasts off yeah, because she absolutely. has a breast Oh my and gosh. And Jolie. That's like uh, what a campaign she had and how many young people cut off their, their breasts thinking that it was their breast that was going to cause the cancer. I, I sit with Outrageous. scientists. And I sit with scientists and, in the morning, and, and they think it's uterus. wonderful. Oh, oh sure. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, my they heart goes out. Yeah, they think it's fantastic. <laughs> they think that these uh, genetically modified mosquitoes they just let loose, they thought that was wonderful. They're sterile. Well, if you eat sterile, oh, you become okay. sterile. So then all the birds and all the bugs and everything else will be sterile. The whole ecosystem is going to be thrown off. Uh, oh. the, as we... As a, as a scientific society, as they change the biosphere, they're changing us because we're all one. It doesn't matter if you're a frog or a bug or a dragonfly, it doesn't matter. We're all one energy. And, and the balance of that needs to be maintained. And Well, the good news is, is that we have the key now, Gary, and we have the knowledge of generating everything so i'm in the process of trying to grow back my other half of my thyroid and awesome. parathyroid awesome. determined to do it mm -hmm. um it's going to take time mm -hmm. but so, so just to let you guys know for those of you who have removed certain things um especially the thyroid if a little piece has been left in the tissue yeah. it's possible to regrow it rebut Ab it so absolutely you know, we've been in, in such a state where um, we believe that the medical community has all the answers all the time, that we run to them and we think that we can cut it out, um, chop it out, uh, radiate it out, give biopsy it out, chemotherapy and, and all of these things that um, the mindset over the last 30 or 40 years has even gotten in incredibly worse mm -hmm. because we're bombarded with information on the television for those people who are still watching television. Um, every so often there's a, you know, a minute, a one minute long commercial about a certain drug that, you know, you talk about the leg problem, um, the fight or flight syndrome, and people mm -hmm. are sitting there with restless leg and, you know, if they got a little cramp in their, in their calf, it's like, oh, they run to the doctor the next day. So they, they have all the answers. Well, they have the answers to do nothing but suppress symptoms. They're not mm -hmm. getting to the underlying cause and the cure of it, as we know. Um, but people to think that they can actually, and they don't want responsibility for their mm -hmm. own choices. They want someone else to make it for them. They want to do it quick and it has to be convenient. And so there's a big job ahead of us all who are trying to shift the consciousness around into thinking that you are much bigger and better than that. You can replenish, you can repair, and you can can regenerate um, just about anything depending on how long you want to work at it and how hard you want to work at it. And um, I, I just want to add uh, one thing about my own health journey because how I came in, in contact with Dr. Morris was um, through, through the salt cave in Naples when I lived down there. Oh, yeah. And Attila, one of the counselors who is um, working now with Dr. Morris, mm -hmm. was the son of the owner. And so I went went in there to get some Himalayan sea salt, and he was telling me about his journey with um, becoming a naturopathic doctor and working there, and went on to the videos, and I had been already like 10 years on this, you know, clean journey that I had, so I went, uh, and I went home, and I watched a bunch of, of course, Dr. Moore's videos, he's addictive in, in yes. terms of the passion that for the information so it's hard to watch just one or two in a row when you're just getting used to him so i said to myself this was like in september of uh, 2014 i said well you know what i think i'm pretty healthy because i've been living a, a disease-free healthy sickness illness-free life i'm going to go make a well patient appointment with him 
Um, so I did, and I got in to see him in January 2016, and the first thing they do is, of course, the iridology. Mm -hmm. And he looked at my eyes, and I also went with a bag full of vitamins and minerals and supplements that I was taking, thinking, mm -hmm. oh, he's going to be so proud of me because <laughs> I'm doing all this good stuff for my body. Well, the iris analysis told another story, and I had all kinds of weaknesses all, all over the place. Mm -hmm. And the second thing is, in going through my bag full of vitamins, I pulled them all out. And he said, nope, 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 nope. And I'm like, well, you know, you know well, what do you do? He says, I get it all from my food. Um, and I was, you know, perplexed at that because I, you know, I knew food was important, you know, especially now if you're eating conventionally grown food, you're getting less quality uh, in the mineral and the vitamin area and amino mm -hmm. acids and all of that. But um, he said, I get it from my food. And then he showed me, and this was the kicker that did it for me. He showed me the pictures of the filtration about what it should look like. And mm -hmm. the clear urine is clearly not a good thing. Are your kidneys shutting down if you have clear urine? Not necessarily, but it is a signpost that down the road there could be more problems. So I went home and I said, I know my kidneys are filtering. And I had never tested my uh, my urine before. And I had... I haven't been to a doctor in probably seven or eight years. So, you know, I was like, okay, this is going to be fun. Mm -hmm. So I get home the next morning. I do the proverbial pee in the jar thing. And I'm like, son of a gun, he's right. <laughs> I don't have cloudy urine. How can this be? I'm so healthy. I'm vibrant. I, I'm active. I dance four or five nights a week. And, and I walk the beach. And I do all these incredible things. How come I'm not healthy? So that started my journey with Dr. Morse and it took me I proceeded then to embark upon a three-month uh, pretty much all fruit diet probably 90 percent 80 to 90 percent I've always been in the last 10 years before that mostly raw anyway mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. maybe 20 um, so that's why I say I was pretty healthy and then it took me three months and about every Every month I was checking the urine to see if there was any strings or clouds or snowflakes mm -hmm. or whatever and sure enough, uh, someday in, in March, um, maybe late March, I, I did the test again, and I looked, and I'm like, he's right. I'm like, oh, my God, he, this man has incredible knowledge. And how many of us are out there walking around with clear urine thinking that we're healthy? And I know that sounds probably crazy to people who are listening to this, but the, the urine is very key in terms of the lymphatic system actually filtering through uh, the kidney, uh, which mm -hmm. has to open up in order to filter that lymphatic system and that then out through the bladder and, of course, out through the other normal channels. So once I became um, aware that this body that I thought was pretty healthy um, still had some work to do, I started to take his classes and became, you know, uh, not just a level two grad, but I also... Uh, at the time, he was offering a separate iridology class, which okay. I also took. And so that's the other part of what I do here um, is to do an iridology analysis and make recommendations for herbal protocols. Um, and then we also do, there's a number of salt rooms in, in my area now. So we go to a salt room. I'm trying to find a hot rock sauna area, but so many are the infrared, the far, the near infrared. Mm -hmm. And that's not good. That's low levels of radiation that are actually burning the under layers of your skin that people don't know about and the whole point is to sweat and those infrared saunas don't necessarily cause you to sweat but in any case that's how that's how I started my second healing um, journey with, with Dr. Morris's protocols and have been probably about 80 percent fruit um, ever since sense and, mm -hmm. and I love it and it has brought me even to a higher level of health that I didn't know existed so that was the other part of my uh, my healing journey from, you know, what I thought was healthy to now even a higher level of health. And I'm still working on getting my eyes tweaked a little bit so that I can sure. make sure and close up some of those uh, areas that need closing and uh, rounding out. And even Dr. Moore says I have um, might have blue eyes and I've always had, you know, uh, you know dark blue brown eyes ever since I knew and on my birth certificate it didn't say what color eyes I had so I I couldn't go back to that as a referral point 
But in any case, he saw a lot of sulfur. And this is really important for all of you who might be listening. He saw a lot of sulfur in my eyes. And one of the things that had been recommended to me 10 years ago um, was to take additional sulfur because a lot of people have problems clearing their throat um, when they eat fatty foods in particular or Mm -hmm. are trying to digest foods that they've consumed. And it's that proverbial, you know, the fat's not getting dissolved. It's not coming up, or at least that's what I was told. And I was also told that the sulfur sacs in your body are, are your tonsils. And that the sulfur would actually help to dissolve and uh, digest the fats. So it was recommended to me that I take this sulfur supplement, pure sulfur, MSM, um, two or three times a day with the rest of my vitamins. And so, boy, was I adding on to an incredible load of sulfur that um, was always causing me to have, you know, gas and, you know, a little bit of digestive problems. But mm-hmm. I didn't know that because I thought this was a healthy thing. Right. So now, uh, Christine and I are going to do, I have, a, I have a professional iridology camera. So sometime today or tomorrow, we're actually going to do another set of of eye photos and see see if I've made any progress and to see an additional set of eye photos because what what um, Christine has already showed me is two sets from her original set and the increased clarity and the color and the closing up of of uh, spaces um, in the iris mm-hmm. which is just amazing just amazing so we're going to do a another set of those later on today Fantastic. but i had to, i'm sorry for the long-windedness but i had to add that in no no that, piece that's about good because that. that that kidney filtration <laughs> healthy thing. Yeah. yeah that kidney yeah. filtration well, i had posted a picture of a urine sample with a filtration in it and i had this nurse uh-huh. get in touch with me and tell me basically that i was crazy she'd been a nurse for 30 years and she worked in the lab where the urine went through right and she'd never seen one with anything in it. And I said, perhaps that's why they were there. <laughs> right. <laughs> because what's not filtering right. is building in right. the body. So, yeah. so yeah, that's it's, why they're sick. That's why they're there. you got to get those kidneys filtering. So. Yeah, it's lymphatic, it's lymphatic sludge, I call it. Yeah. And um, it's, get it's really out. important. Mm-hmm. And um, for me, um, I just want to talk a little bit about dry fasting. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, you know, your body knows when we get sick, you don't have an appetite. Well, you know why? Because your body's fighting to heal. Mm-hmm. And so every night when you sleep, you're healing. And what are you doing when you're sleeping? You're resting without any food, any water, anything. So that's why I decided, you know, after peeking in at the master fast and seeing the miraculous recovery of, mm-hmm. of Gabrielis um, and how he went from May to October, um, just a totally different person. You know, um, Gabrielis, I don't know, most of you know out there, but he was parachuting and, and um, skydiving and he was slammed into the water at about 90 miles an hour and um, went into a coma, broke his neck, uh, was paralyzed and, um, and anyway, he is thriving right now. Um, he started working with Dr. Morse and healing his body and got out of the wheelchair. And um, make a long story short, like I said, last year was just I saw the transition and I said, wow. And it was a lot of dry fasting. So he just started to open up the kidneys and started to purge um, a lot of the toxins and also using, obviously, the fruits, um, mm-hmm. the melons, berries and the grapes and the herbs. Um, so I I dove in. I literally dove in. And um, I do have pictures in my phone, but just it was a m- miracle for me, too. And it really helped me um, mentally and physically um, just exceed any expectations I had. Like at one point, um, I didn't I, you, you're not supposed to feel your body. So right. when you wake up in the morning, and you have stiff joints and you have that headache or you're a little dizzy from your vertigo or you're nauseous to wake up. And literally fly around. That's how I felt. There was no, and this was all done during dry fasting. Dry fasting and intermittent dry fasting. So I started out with just 12 hours, including sleep dry. Then I worked up to a 14. Then I worked up to an 18. And then finally 24. Then I did a 36. And I went as long as 52 hours without food or water. I've done 33. Dark, 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 dark sediment. Um, urine with just it, it was so thick it was 
it was like a gooey consistency. That's how much sewage I was releasing mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. when you when you gently break the fast. So um, that was just miraculous. Okay. And so that's another thing I encourage everybody is to start a daily dry fasting, even if it's stopping eating two hours before you're going to bed um, and then waiting a couple of hours after you wake up. So you're doing like a 12-hour daily dry and just gently work yourself up to um, a 24-hour dry fast. And you mm-hmm. could do that as often as you like on your days off, of course, when you're resting. Can you and explain, that will really help. Can you explain the master fast, what it is? Uh, the master fast is, um, in my opinion, uh, is a very high level. So for those of you coming from the sad standard American diet, um, it's something you have to transition to. You basically stop eating. Um, the only thing you're consuming is a grape juice, not even grapes, um, and lemons. How, and you're how many, taking drinking herbal. How many lemons did you put in it? Um. I don't really know if there's is if there's a specific protocol, oh, but I, I would I don't put. Either. I just wonder what I would you put, used. I would. I would. I was doing like maybe eight to sixteen ounces. Um, you know, upon waking with uh, maybe one or two lemons. The more lemons, the better, because lemons are very detoxifying. And believe it or not, they're yes. alkalizing. Yes. So yeah. um, and that'll help open up the kidneys and flush the system with the grapes, with the power of the grapes. Um, Grape juice. Were you drinking the juice straight or were you adding water? No, I was drinking the juice straight, just okay. with lemons. So like the 12 ounces so of, of grape juice and one, two 12, lemons? 16 ounces of grape juice um, with the lemons and basically that's it. I mean, I did incorporate at times, I did a 27-day master fast where I was just basically um, just doing the grapes but you can incorporate, I felt it helped me uh, with some fresh watermelon and, and coconut water. Mm-hmm. Um, those, and obviously those are, those are periods of the day where you're doing, that's, it's called your eating window or your drinking window. And then you're doing the teas and you're taking your herbs. And then you're incorporating that with daily dry fasting and weekly dry fasting. And it just elevates you and the healing is, it, it's rapid, rapid healing and um you're doing a lot of sleeping and resting and doing a lot of breathing you're doing also what's what's very important especially for those of us who are constipated who have been constipated you're doing enemas and hydrothera- colon hydrotherapy um which, which is pulling parasites um i should pull some off show you guys what <laughs> what's really possible and what's living inside our body oh my god yes been there so Seen that. um <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. it is, and and mucoloid plaque and all these things from all these white flowers and you know that they're making breads and things out of that just the glue they're just sticking to everything, and yeah. it will actually help break that up and and get it out because the body doesn't want anything in it that's not alive. That's why our fat right. is alive. Uh, the parasites are alive. Everything in our body is alive. And that's the only thing I can't figure out, and we know it's dangerous, is a tooth. Because they can kill a tooth in your mouth, and it will stay there as long as the tooth above it is there. Even if you have what? a tooth. Parasites? No, the, the, uh, the body doesn't like anything in it that's not alive. It will push it out. Oh, yeah. Okay? Absolutely. It will either push it out or kill you, one or the other. Because it'll get infected, because it sees it as a foreign object, so it's trying to eliminate it, push it out. So the only thing I can't figure out is a tooth. Now, if they pull a tooth on the top and it's directly over a tooth on the bottom, if that tooth is alive, it'll push it out. But they can kill a tooth in your mouth, and as long as the tooth above it or below it is there, it will stay in your mouth. And I think that's why... uh, root canals are so dangerous is because you have a dead tooth in your mouth and the metal that's in there too is creating a little electrical issue in there so other than that nothing can be in your body that's not alive and if it's alive it can be eliminated I want to show you one of my root canals that I had removed Um, right before I started on Dr. Morse's journey I was working with a, a functional chiropractor 
and he did a lot of kinesiology and he sort of helped me start to transition off all of my toxic foods that I was eating. And um, he also worked with a holistic dentist. And like I said earlier that my whole mouth was filled with mercury. Mm -hmm. And so um, I had, yeah, I had had some removed but obviously not the proper way so a lot of that mercury was just reabsorbed <clears throat> into my gums right. and into my lungs so um it was very expensive but it's a necessity if you want to get well especially if you have yeah. all that mercury in the mouth but um i want to show you my root canal because this has been in my mouth since i was a little girl and um it was rotting away and it was wreaking havoc it had been infected for years and years and years and that bacteria down at the root that's 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 so beyond toxic that's constantly leaching into your body into your immune system and your immune system is constantly fighting this bacteria yeah. so you go into a, an overdrive and then all sorts of things problems happen but um while christine is looking for that i think it's important for people to know why the dry fasting is so important um you know you talk about the healing and you know it's a good place for healing but the reason for that um that it works so well is because 80%, uh, give or take, depending on reports, uh, different reports or so, of your body's energy is consistently devoted to digestion. So when you are continually consuming meal after meal after meal and snacks and you are perhaps overeating at every meal and feeling stuffed, then um, your body can't heal. And that's important to do it at night especially um, to do it when the body is really resting. Hopefully you're resting, resting. you're not yeah. dealing with any emotional, uh, mental or emotional issues while you're sleeping. But it's because the body can completely devote all of its energy systems to regeneration, absorption, assimilation, and uh, regeneration. And then when you add the herbs on top of that, it's just, you know, a powerhouse of healing. It's magical. So I just wanted to that. And for myself, that, that was... It's the top of the mountain high. I call it the dry high. There's no better feeling. You're feeling from head to toe. You can't feel. You don't feel. And you're 100% in a God world. That's just my what I experience when I don't eat or drink anything. And the longer the better. Um, but so this is my tooth. Okay. This was the crown that was on it. Get so up you, to the camera. See, can, can you, you see that? The oh, there yep. it is. So yep, I got it. Okay, go. so this piece. Wow. This is the tooth. This is the top of the tooth. And this is the chunk that was in between the tooth and the top, which sat right on my gum line. And this is what was in my gums, obviously. Wow. That was in my body, le leaching bacteria for, I don't mm -hmm. know, maybe 30, 30 years mm -hmm. or more. And so, mercury. Um, yes. And mercury. And um, I just want to show you one other thing. Um, I just recently healed a cavity in my mouth Good for um, you. that I knew because that's know. most people don't know that a cavity is a bacteria it's alive and it's eating the cells so once you learn how to eliminate that bacteria it goes away yeah and I, I know I found out that what was happening was I was replenishing my body with calcium once again and so that was a good indication that I was finally absorbing calcium mm. because it's a calcium utilization issue when your teeth start to rot also yeah so that was that's another thing that we do we start to get all the glands up and running and mm -hmm. we start to work on the absorption and the digestion and then we start to heat that's how we heal everything and this is obviously it's a tooth so it's a hard cell but it still sells yeah and as I was brushing my teeth one night can you see that? Yeah. It's a pick stitch. So, yeah. As I was brushing my teeth, I noticed that the black decay was starting to come off. And I said, oh, my gosh. And I looked closer in them. I'm like, this cannot be happening. And I started to brush it a little bit more until it all brushed out. Mm -hmm. So it just pushed it. It pushed it right to the surface yeah. and came out. Yeah. That, that bacteria, it, it eliminated it. She How cool is that? that? That, that is awesome, and anybody can do it. But it's yes. important to teach our children because we're a little on the back end. I always used to say that I don't go to a dentist anymore. I have so much metal, I go to an auto body shop to have my teeth worked on. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it, it's, it's funny when 
to go to a dentist, like the first time that I did the master cleanse, uh, the master cleanse, yes, that's lemon, maple syrup, and cayenne. Uh, I did ten days, no food, and in seven days, I, I wore bifocal glasses from the time I was around six or seven years old. My very first pair of glasses were bifocal, and I can still feel my eyes changing from when I was a kid. They just shifted like so. By day wow. seven, I've never worn glasses since. Uh, oh my God! That's how. And I think I'm going to go on the master cleanse right now. <laughs> and the uh, <laughs> well, I've already, already experienced dry fasting, yeah. and you can yeah. see your filtration has been improved. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And let me show you some of my fil filtration. This was back. after a uh, 48 a uh, 48 hour. So this is what your urine should look like, everyone. That is lymphatic sludge right there and disease in a jar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It belongs, in the, it belongs in the toilet. This is the beginning of our digestive system, and it pulls you to the kitchen. And the back end is the exit, and it pulls you to the bathroom <laughs> or pushes you to the bathroom. I'm going to show you a little bit of um, – these are par parasites and mm -hmm. mucoid plaque combined. This was um, during uh, the master fast, I believe it was. Do you see that? Uh, oh, yeah. Yep. Okay. So, yeah, this is what's... Um, and that's what causes this is malabsorption. What's malabsorption. That's, that's one of the things that causes malabsorption. So when people have a malabsorption issue and they're watching this, if, if somebody reads your eyes and say you have a malabsorption issue, that's the cause right there. Yeah. Because it can't absorb into, and, the, into the body. Yeah. And I really think it's... A important that we talk about all these eliminations because people don't believe it. I can, I've shown people these pictures and they, they don't believe it. Mm. They said that did not come out of anybody. So, yeah. um, but when you work with people and they start, I've had people get in touch with me and say, I got stuff coming out of me I've never seen before. Right? And they're panicking. Mm -hmm. you go, hey! yeah, yeah. And the, it's time to you celebrate. celebrate you know, it's like a yippee moment. And uh, it's really important for people to understand that because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not there. If you're having issues, these are some of the things that are creating it. You may not have mucoloid plaque. You may have something else. But to go in there and discover and find that, especially through iridology, uh, to find out where the weak spots are. Uh, I, I had read somebody's eyes the other day, and they had a good constitution, but they had some genetic weaknesses. And they said, how can I have a good constitution and a genetic weakness? Our bodies, are, everybody's full of strengths and weaknesses. It doesn't matter if it's mental, spiritual, physical. We have those. And finding that balance to help our body heal is extremely important. And it's something that we are not taught at all, ever, through the medical system. I was going to mention my gums, they were all puffy and bleeding. I'd have like six abscesses at a time. And when I did the cleanse, that all went away. And when I went to my dentist, he said, I've never seen your gums look like this. What have you been doing? And as I started to explain the master cleanse, his eyes kind of opened. And then you watched him go right back to sleep. And it was never mentioned again. You know, right. Because if they taught us all, right. it's a vitamin. So this is scurvy. That's what that is, is scurvy. And mm -hmm. it's a vitamin C deficiency. So for all the people who have bleeding gums or swollen gums or whatever, just start drinking uh, different citrus if you can, uh, like the Master Cleanse or even coconut water. Get, get vitamin C in your body and your gums will heal themselves. That's what the body as does. As long as they're heals. absorbing it. <laughs> yes. As long as they're well, absorbing it. Yes, and changing well, the pH in your mouth because your mouth is too acidic. Right. The most so. powerful, I believe, the most powerful intake of anything that you can do is two things. One is mono fruits, is giving your body, that's another level of letting your body heal with digestion. So it has less digestion. It's just eating one fruit at a sitting. Yes. So you could eat, I eat half of a watermelon, and that'll be my lunch or my breakfast. Or I'll have maybe four mangoes. But I find that the watermelon, the Concord grapes, lemons, coconut water. Those are the most four most powerful things you can do if you wanted to just start to transition is focus on those foods. Mm -hmm. Just take those in and eat as much of those as you want until you feel full and you will feel full. And eventually all Absolutely. your cravings 
this is another thing that I used to crave sugar and salt, mm -hmm. sugar, and salt. And all of those cravings go away when you start out, when you pull the plug from the septic tank, because Absolutely. everything that you're feeding starts to be eliminated. And a lot of it is parasites. And you cannot imagine at how much parasites we have and how many they produce daily thousands and thousands of eggs and millions of eggs every day. So, um, you know, once you start releasing that, you won't have any of the problems. A lot of people say, Oh, I can't eat fruit. I can't do all fruit. You know, some people are so toxic, mm -hmm. um, and hardened. So just to gently start out with the watermelons and the coconut waters and the teas, you know, Dr. Moore said, amazing stomach tea and I'm, I'm not sure if you have something for the, just for the stomach well I have a lot of teas for a lot of different for a lot of different things that because the, the herbs feed your body and the hydration mm -hmm. costs it, it, I always use a driver like cleavers or something like that which is a great for the lymphatic system and then specific organs or glands whatever they have an issue with sometimes I'll work around that gland and strengthen everything because we're always talking about disease and weakness. Well, I try to talk about what will build your body, strengthen your body, and as your body gets stronger, it will eliminate the weakness. Mm. So it's kind of like the opposite of how we've been trained to think. We should think about strengthening. When we think about doing push-ups, we think we're going to get stronger, right? Well, we can put things in our body that will do the same thing without using steroids and drugs and, and all these different things that make these guys into gorillas. That It's, it's weird. Uh, and, and I have a confession. When I do a dry fast, I watch food competition shows because it makes me not want to eat. I'll do a whole marathon. Like, <laughs> if, if I'm, if I'm going to be awake for 14 hours, I start with one and I go right through all these food competitions because when you see somebody eat nine pounds of steak in 10 minutes, it makes you not want to eat. Right. It can make you, know? you want to actually have, yes. have a little explosion. So it takes my appetite right away. And uh, you know, One of the things I'd, I'd like to add, um, going back on the, um, the parasites and the mucoid plaque, uh, when I started holding classes, when I made a pit stop in the villages for a short time before I went to Naples, I was teaching and a person was in the audience and I didn't know anybody then. <clears throat> and um, I was talking about all this buildup because I was also like Christine, I had taken pictures of what came out of me and saw it with my own eyes and the ball of tapeworms and all of that. So I was trying to impress upon pe people what is resident in your body that doesn't isn't supposed to be there mm -hmm. and a little bit about how it finds its way in. And sometimes it's, you know, through the innocent touching of fruits and vegetables in the market, you know, when you're taking in, uh, you know, eggs or parasites from there. And so anyways, this uh, one of one of the uh, attendees called me about a week later uh, in distress. And um, it was a gentleman. And he said, um, I'm really sick, Linda. And I said, well, what's the matter? And he says, well, my stomach is really, really feeling bad. And I've got all this stuff coming out um, in a bowel movement. And I said, well, congratulations. I said, you're probably getting rid of a lot of built up mucoid plaque and impacted fecal matter, as I first learned it was called. And he says, but I'm really sick. And I said, well, if you feel that bad, you know, I can't tell you not to go to the doctors, but this sounds like a healing crisis. Um, and I said, those are to be celebrated and, you know, you're welcome to go to whoever you want. But I said, this is a very positive thing because he told me he had started to do a cleanse like three or four days mm -hmm. before and he was doing it not under anyone's supervision. So I don't even know what the product was and I didn't even know about Dr. Morse then. So this was just through other means that I was suggesting at the time. So um, he hung up and then a couple of days later, he called me again completely almost um, neurotic because he had seen this black truck tire rubber substance being emitted from his bowels. Absolutely. And I said, you know, I was jumping up and down and I was saying, good for you, good for you. You have no idea what the healing level is that you've just accomplished through all of this. 
he says, but my girlfriend wants me to go to the hospital. And, and I said, well, again, you know, you can, uh, you can do that. And, but I think the, the point I'm trying to make here is um, he went on to lose 40 pounds, mm-hmm. um, was um, 235 or 40 and got down to like 200 for the first time in his life. So he was feeling really super. But the important thing to mention is the healing crises that happen when you are doing a detox and why it's so important to work with a practitioner that you can trust that has got had some either personal experience or knowledge about what the healing crises can be because they can run across the board um, from just a mild dizziness or, or or feeling sick to your stomach to you know having skin lesions come out having your hair fall out vomiting diarrhea these are all you know, for people who have had long histories of pharmaceutical drugs, multiple pharmaceutical drugs, and, you know, major illnesses, you are pulling what is detox. It's not just about the gut, but it's also about um, digging deep at um, almost down to the bone marrow level when people are digging that deep. And so you are pulling things out of your body. Your body's um, purging. It's purging, <clears throat> and you're pulling out um, suppressed uh, symptoms that, you know, could re- repeat themselves from an illness or a disease that you've had, you know, years ago. So you you could be repeating those things because you're getting rid of the, uh, the dead cells and you're replacing all of that with a nutrition that your body's like, what? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen this stuff come through in a long, long time. So yay. And so they're getting rid of it. So uh, again, the healing crisis, I think, think is something really important for mm-hmm. anybody that's watching this to understand please do not take upon this journey yourself unless you've done a thorough, thorough, thorough amount of research and you really are going to move into this um, slowly at first if you have the time. Um, but if you have been diagnosed with a chronic stage four, this, that, or you know, you're in a chair and you want to get out and you want to do some digging deeply, that's when it's really important to, to work with a practitioner who really has been trained to know uh, what your body can do and how slowly and quickly and work with you with follow-up mm-hmm. phone calls and so forth. And it's so funny because a lot of the things that you're purging, these symptoms you've experienced because of your level of toxicity. So from in my, my case, uh, just one, so vertigo, I used to get vertigo and I would be on my back and I would vomit. And so now last year, earlier last year, I, I woke up one morning and I had such a severe case of vertigo ago and I literally was in bed for two three days and I remember vomiting and I vomited a whole bunch of mucus mm. and I was like yeah <laughs> it was like I yeah. know even I celebrate those and yes. even I couldn't even walk to the bathroom but I was just saying thank you Jesus because I knew that I was healing and so you're going to experience you're going to have the migraine you're going to have the the dizziness. You're going to have all of that. And it comes up differently for everyone. Mm-hmm, right? but, um, and you're going to have a lot of emotional healing where you're just going to cry for no reason, you know, and or the next hour you could be laughing uncontrollably. And so this is all good signs and people get very nervous and they yeah. get they get yes, that's how you can tell a seasoned detox person from a beginner because we celebrate it and they're horrified by it. <laughs> 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 and, and by the way, just to go back to the hair falling out, mm-hmm. your hair will grow back. Yes. Uh, your, your hair on your head, wherever you have hair that you want hair, I mean, it is going to grow back because when your hair is, is, is being lost, it's the, the skin releasing all the toxins. It's the replenishment of the cells underneath the layers of the skin that actually have the hair follicles there. So um, there's a number of people that we've heard about through our our training and and testimonials where some young woman actually lost her hair twice and when I met her at class uh, the one time after she had gone through all of that oh my god she had the most beautiful head of hair that you could have ever imagined and her skin was so clear and she was basically knocking on death's door her physician at the time had given her like four, four to six weeks to live and she refused to accept that uh, diagnosis and uh, mm-hmm. death sentence, literally, and turned herself around. But it was um, it was a journey that she knew she, she could do. Mm-hmm. Awesome. And yeah. so, she did. so we've been over an hour now. <laughs> so we're going to have to wrap this up. <laughs> okay. And uh, is, is it... Talk about. 
I know. I know. It is. It's so amazing. It's amazing. Uh, what uh, if you had just a final thing to say to help people on their journey to understand better? What What would it be? What 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 advice would you give people? Oh wow! Um, I would say that your body heals itself. It's not, nothing that we do as a practitioner. It's nothing that even you do. It's the less you do, the more you educate yourself on the healing process. Um, via, in my opinion, Dr. Morse's teachings. Um, you might want to start watching his YouTube videos. He has close to a thousand of them. And start educating yourself and try I know everybody's situation is different, but try to be with yourself um, in silence. Um, I did a lot of praying, and I think that's definitely how I've been led here. Um, when you're sick and tired of being sick and tired is when you're going to open yourself up to whatever is possible. Um, and that's basically what I did because you get tired tired of being on that journey where you know you're being told there's nothing wrong with you when you know that there's something going on within your body and it can literally take its toll mentally so you have to stop listening because there's so much nonsense out there and even from your family members if you can get away and come to a retreat like this or or just I don't know take some time away and just be with yourself um, start eating less Start bringing in healthier foods, more fruits. If you could do 75% of fruit and 25% vegetables, I know it sounds drastic, but you can do it. Even if you have hypoglycemia, you start to transition. Um, and as practitioners, we can easily help you with the diet. That's a no-brainer. But um, you have to really be ready for this, and you have to be thirsty and really want it more than anything, and you have to put yourself first, and mm -hmm. I would say in my case, I never put myself first, and I never had self-love for myself, and I think it starts with self-love, and once you have that self-love for yourself, and, and that understanding, okay, this is what I have to do, then comes discipline, and once you apply the self-love with the discipline, that's when the miracles unfold. And just be true to yourself and try to stay focused on and on course and just keep your heart open to whatever your higher power is and get out into nature and try to do as many things as you can to ease up. Well, I would say now the most important thing is to stop buying anything that's not um, non-organic or, non or GMO. You have to stay away from those foods because... That's what's causing 90% of your problems. So I just, I love you all. And I, you know, I'm here if any of you guys want to reach out and, uh, and just, just to talk and uh, you can message me on Facebook. Also, you know, if you'd like to even talk, I, I can always give you my cell phone and um, I'm here. I love you guys. I want everybody. I want to end suffering and world suffering. It's easy to do. Um, it's, it's attainable and you just have to have um, um, discipline and you have to have hope and you have to just start implementing all these things in your life to change to start so I'm here and I really love you Gary thank you for doing this and love giving you. us this opportunity it's been great and I can't wait to see you I'm going to see you in a month I know. yes so, you so. are yes you are hugs for everybody <laughs> I'm Native American so they call me hugging bear oh that's beautiful <laughs> thank you that's thank beautiful you. And I guess what I'd like to kind of um, add to that a little bit is um, you have to believe that whatever the choices are that you're going to make are actually going to work for you. Um, you know, certainly transitioning, starting out with fruit is great. Getting rid of the stressors in your life is, um, uh, I don't know if there's a one, two, three, four. I think they're all together at the same time. But people have to believe and there have been, I'm sure you're familiar, Gary, with um, different healing modalities that have worked for people. Some people go to acupuncture. Some people go to chiropractors. Some people do uh, Reiki, um, whatever healing mechanism 
mechanisms there are out there. Why do some work uh, and some don't work for certain people? And I think it's a twofold process. Um, when people are on a journey looking for a way to heal, they're out there looking for everything and they're not quite ready yet to be relieved of whatever the circumstances that's causing the illness and disease. Mm -hmm. And um, that is so important to understand because finally, as Christine said, it's actually in my brochure. It's, uh, I don't know who coined the phrase, but it wasn't her and it wasn't me. But when you do get sick and tired of being sick and tired, it's almost like the next choice that you make that is a healthy choice that's going to start you on that journey and that path to a new, uh, new body, mind, and spirit is the one that's going to work for you. And that's one of the reasons why I incorporate all of the four, you know, mental, emotional, spiritual, and physical healing modalities here at Phoenix Rising. So um, I think that's important to actually believe in yourself that you do have, have the power. Mm -hmm. Everybody has the power individually. And when you're ready to make that decision to break away from the old training that we've had with believing that the medical facilities and the medical community has the only answer for things, um, then that is when your healing journey is going to start. So um, I, too, have been in this for the last now 12 and a half years years. Uh, going on 13, helping people heal, trying to spread the word about alternative healing. Um, I'm tired. Of, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired of seeing so many sick people sick and tired. Yeah. And, you know, when you know you've been through that journey yourself, you know that there's a way for them to be and feel better. And they uh, refuse to do it, many of them, because we didn't talk about this, but it was the addictive quality mm -hmm. also of the that we're eating and they truly are addictive in oh, really very powerful ways uh, equal to uh, street drugs um, sugar is the equivalent of mm -hmm. cocaine you can mm -hmm. see a brain on cocaine a brain on sugar they look the same um, and even the casein in dairy is actually a mild um, form of um, uh, the drug that you used to shoot up what's that one heroin when? heroin um, there's been a very, there's been some studies done that show that casein has actually got the mild effects of heroin. Mm -hmm. So we are an addicted world to processed foods. And when you start to break away from that it is one of the reasons why you can experience all of these healing crises. So it's important for people to understand, um, that addictive quality of food, but changing the diet is absolutely <laughs> Okay. I just want to say one thing. Yeah. And since I'm here, I learned something from Linda. We were food shopping in this uh, um, healthy food store, and I went to go buy some coconut milk. And Linda said, wait a second, let me read the label. I looked at the label, and there was carrageenan. Okay, now, carrageenan, I didn't, I never even assumed that that was even a bad thing. You know, I had no, I didn't even know what that was. So even myself now, mm -hmm. after two mm -hmm. years, and Linda said, you want to explain? There's that? always something new we can learn. Carrageenan is from a seaweed, which is um, considered a natural substance, so they can call it natural ingredients, mm -hmm. but it is, is extremely highly inflammatory. Um, and it is part of the MSG family. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with the story of how MSG came into being, um, but it was through World War II when our American soldiers captured some of the Japanese. And uh, the rations that were also taken upon capture were sampled by the Americans. And their canned processed food tasted a whole lot better than what our Americans were eating. And when the American quartermaster looked into it, they discovered that the Japanese were adding um, kombu, which is a seaweed that's grown off the Japanese shores, um, into the food because it enhances the flavor. Well, unfortunately, because it is MSG, it also can cause brain cell death. It crosses the blood-brain barrier. It is an excitotoxin, which if uh, people want to Google, um, I think it's a one-hour lecture that Dr. Russell Blaylock uh, wrote a book called Excitotoxins, The Taste mm -hmm. That Kills. It's all about MSG, carrageenan, and, and all these other names that can be, be given to MSG in diluted forms because MSG can be added to food. Food, uh, processed food, especially soups, and it's, it has to be called 99, it's 99% 99 pure, it can be labeled MSG. Anything less than that 
and it can be actually be any derivative name any any of the food manufacturers want to add to it and it will create glutamate which is what is actually passing over the blood brain barrier to cause the excitotoxins the cells they they literally you know just pop and mm -hmm. they die so the carrageenan, the MSG, and all of these subsequent food names that are uh, associated with the substance that can be added to food products um, can cause inflammation, cell death, um, and addictive. And it's addictive because it makes the food taste better. Mm -hmm. I want you to go back from. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So becoming a food label. Uh, processed food label reader is critically important mm -hmm. and to know. And when, when you eat fresh fruits and vegetables, you have the ingredient of one. Exactly. You have the carrot, you have the mango, you and have the watermelon, the grape. basically anything that's in the middle of the grocery store is processed. It right. has to be. It's in a right. bag, it's in a box, it's in a can, it's in... So, yeah. You want to control the energy cool. of America? You take a grocery store the size of Whole Foods or Walmart or whatever, right? And you make the fresh produce 20 by 20 square feet and the rest of it is all processed. That's exactly. how you control exactly. the energy of a nation. And yeah. we see it in Gary, every um, store we go us, through. Go ahead. I want to, let's, if we can, let's just take a moment. Um, I want to, in closing, I want to do a prayer, obviously, for the fires mm -hmm. out out west and I want to do our hurricane coming but I also also which I woke up this morning thinking about this because I've been so I, I've been set back and um, I, I honestly haven't stopped crying since I watched the GMOs revealed videos because it almost was like a for me and so I want to instead of thinking negatively about these forces mm -hmm. um, I want to if we could all just do a one minute prayer prayer. Linda, I would love for you to say a little prayer for these people, whether they're consciously knowing that they're harming us or not. I want to lift their souls. I want to mm -hmm. elevate them. And um, because it's basically now air, water, and food. So I want to help. I want to send healing love to these people. Um, I want to send a lot of healing love to the farmers who are in these situations where mm -hmm. some of them don't even have a choice to grow this modified food and franken food that we're ingesting so i want to lift those forces those evil forces can we do that sure um if that's going to be our our final bit for this um session um i'd just like to say before that um people can find me uh this is a brochure that is online on my website my website is called uh, www.curediseasenow.com. Disease has one, uh, it's not plural, it's singular. So it's curediseasenow.com. A copy of this trifold brochure about the live-in services there, but also about all the other services that I offer that are incorporated into a live-in service, which I offer individually uh, from White Eagles and Angels, which is the name of my home. So uh, my contact information is there how people can reach me and i do do skype call interviews as, as well as phone interviews um and so we can get together with whatever your circumstances are if you feel called to um to reach out and before we do the prayer i just want to say that we are taught that we are victims and scarcity when in truth we are infinite beings living in an infinite universe with infinite potential in a world of abundance and shifting yes, that consciousness right. to the world is actually our goal and as they heal they will reach those levels where they realize the world is providing everything we're the only ones uh, of all living things in the world we're the only ones that live this lifestyle unless we bring an animal in and domesticate them as we are domesticated exactly so. And I think it was 1% uh, of the world's population controls all of the other 99. Right. So that's a pretty staggering t statistic to follow that up with. So when you think so. about being uh, a fruitarian, a vegetarian, a vegan, it takes up 1%. So actually we are the 1%. Yeah. 
Yay! I'm shooting for barbarian. That's my goal. That's a good goal. That is a good goal. That is so an let's... honorable goal. I'm going to play some beautiful Crystal Lair uh, music that Linda uh, okay. made. Everybody take it, please. Please take a deep, deep breath. Let it out. See yourself. See these golden, silver, beautiful roots stemming from the bottom of your feet, going deep into Mother Earth and anchoring around that wonderful core, that source of all the food and water that we take in. See then that golden white light from those roots that you're taking in from Mother Earth come back up through every single layer of the earth, through the bottom of your feet, up through all of your chakras, your root, your sacral, your, uh, your uh, solar plexus, your heart, your throat, your ajna, your third eye, and your crown chakra. And it doesn't stop there. It goes way up into, way up into the heavens, way out into the universe way, way, way up. So now you are connected with the ethereal source of all that is, with the universe, with the creator of all that is. And we ask you, Mother, Father, God, to please bestow upon all those people who are helping us by creating awareness through all of the documentaries, through all of the uh, health information, the alternative health information that we are receiving that are helping us to create an incredible awareness of consciousness of, of the, and Dr. Morse, Dr. Robert N. Morse, who is actually helping us reach that goal as well. We are raising our consciousness through our choices, through our food sources. We are infinite beings with infinite possibilities, and we are we are going to take this world and turn it around to make it a place of love and peace. We also want to extend love and light to surround those people who work for organizations that we might otherwise sometimes feel are not in our best interest. But by, by in doing so, we are enfolding and encasing them in a beautiful, beautiful envelope of love and light so that they will hopefully, through our efforts, and facing them with this love, with divine love from the creator of all that is, make choices that will bring forth to us and for them a, a change in the world in ways that we don't even know will exist yet, where we will ultimately believe that we will live in peace and harmony and allow each culture and each different country and each different state live the lives that they want want to live in peace and in total harmony among each other. And so it is. work you do and I will see you at Dr. Morse level too. Have you ever been on the crystal bed? No. No. Um, I'm going to be I'm going to be making announcements for it as soon as I get the application and get it submitted um, and for people who are doing um, level two they've been to level one so I'm going to have it available probably in 45 minute sessions in awesome. the morning. So that if you want to do a morning session before class starts, you can get it in and not miss anything. All Thank right. you so much for this opportunity. I love you. Okay. Love you. Take care. Look forward to meeting you in person and giving you one of those Absolutely. honey hugs. Absolutely. Is it honey Absolutely. hugs? Yeah. Honey uh, bear? What was, what, hugging what hugging your, bear. Hugging bear. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. I love that. I love that. Look forward to a big hug.